In this video, we're going to go through the steps of how we build a landing page for our website with Figma. Let's get started. I launch Figma and I come to the page where I have logged in. I'm going to begin by creating a new file. Once I create my new file, I'm going to come to frame, click on to frame, and then I'll see in the right hand column, I get a choice of the different devices that I am designing for. I'm going to focus in on designing for a desktop. I can see right now I have the iMac, Surface Book, MacBook Pro, MacBook Desktop. I am just going to go with the desktop. I now have a space that is the size of a desktop. Now I am going to work on designing a landing page for a website design. Since I am just going to design a landing page, I am going to focus on adding a larger image. When we look at websites, often the landing page is like the front door. As I begin to design, I want to think about the underlying grid that informs my web design projects. And I want to also think about the different components, a header, a main content area, and a footer as well. I am going to begin with a header, which will also have my nav bar. As I come to Figma, I am going to use a shape to define this area. I can see the size, the size of this. And I want to think that every 72 inches is about an inch. I'm going to change the color here. I'm going to go for more of a purpley color. I chose this color working with Adobe color. I also am going to place my logo. When I come to my shapes, I can see that I have my place image area. I click place image and I find the root to my image. I place my image. I can resize my image and I bring my image for my logo to my nav bar. Maybe behind this image, I want to add another shape. I grab my ellipse tool. I change the color of my ellipse. Now I want to place this image behind my other image. So what I can do is come and change the order of the images in the left panel. Whatever is on top will be on top. Let's say I want to change the size of the ellipse. I'm going to lock the light bulb and click onto the ellipse and I can choose, I can drag from the corner, but I also can change the size on the right panel. As I come further, I can see that I can add a stroke and I can also change the color of the stroke. I've chosen all of my colors again from the Adobe color. Now I want both the light bulb and the circle to travel together. So I am going to select both of these images and I'm going to come on up to object and I'm going to group the selection. I now have my logo. From here, I'm going to add a larger image to the middle. I grab place image and I come to my downloads. I want this image to be below my nav bar. I'm going to come to object and I am going to send it to the back. This part of my image will serve as my jumbotron. I'll add a button and a call to action. I'm going to use this bottom area for my footer. I will draw another shape for this area. Now I'm going to add some type for more information. As I take a closer look, I can click on one of these images and I can add different effects. So I'm going to begin by taking a look at my effects and I can see that I have the drop shadow. I also have some other things to choose from an inner shadow, a layer blur and a background blur. I'm going to add a little drop shadow here. I can click onto the little sun icon and I can add more with the blur and the X, Y axis and adjust this even more. I'm going to come in now and add my nav bar. I'm going to work with type Now this whole area for my type. I can change my font as well as the color of my font. I add home, about, testimonials, career, resources, free consultation, contact. I'm going to work more with the size of my nav bar. 
and fill in the space just a little bit more and grab my black arrow and move this on down. Now, if I'd like to, I can actually group this whole section as the nav bar. I click my ellipse. I select my light bulb. I select my type as well as my rectangle. I come to object and I group my selection. I can turn my selection on and off. And if I'd like to, I can rename it navbar. Since I'm creating this layout for a design for a website, I could also click fix position when scrolling. This would mean that as the page was scrolling when it was rendered on a device, my navbar would stay in place. Now I'm going to go to this middle section where I'm going to place a call to action. Because I'm going to place type over top of this, I just added a fill to this image. This will let the type show better over top of this image. I can double click and change the color of this fill. I'm going to place the type in the left section. So I'm going to move the fill a little bit more to the left. Now I am going to add my call to action. I'm going to come back to my type. I'm going to come back to my type and I am going to create a text box. I've typed, let us help you bring your ideas to life and move your creative career to the next level. As I click onto my text box, I can see that I have worked with the font color, the font, I've worked with adding some of them being capital and some lowercase to create a sense of visual hierarchy. Again, I could center this, I could left align or right align. I'm going to go with aligning my text left. Now I'm going to add a button. I'll start my button out by creating a rectangle. I'm going to have my rectangle be the same color as I've used in my nav bar, writing in the number for the color, lowering the opacity a little bit. I'm going to add a stroke. I'm going to add the stroke on the inside. Again, changing the color of the stroke to match the colors that I'm using in this design. I'm going to also add a drop shadow. As I take a closer look at the drop shadow, I can also change the color of the drop shadow. For my button, I want to have rounded corners. I can come back on over and I can click and add a five to the corners. I'm going to up this a little bit more. Let's go for 25. I can see now I have rounded corners. As I take a closer look, I might want to turn my stroke off. And now I'm going to add my type to my button. I grab my T for type and I type, try it now. Again, I can change the color of my font as well. And my website is coming together. I can end by adding content for this bottom area. Since this is my landing page, I actually am going to add a little bit more content on my other pages. I'll design the footer a little bit differently. As I come to this content section below my image, I am adding three little icons and then I will add some text. I'll make sure that I stylize them all the same way. Once I have this created, I'm going to recreate heading text goes here below my other two images. So we can see working in Figma, we can create layouts for our web design ideas and projects.